Hi, I'm Emily Gallagher. I'm an endocrinologist at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Um, and I'm a researcher. I study um, breast cancer research and metabolism. So triple negative breast cancer um, is a specific type of breast cancer where the cells don't express the estrogen receptor or the progesterone receptor, and they also don't overexpress um, another receptor, which is called HER2. So when we uh, think of triple negative breast cancer, we're basically referring to the fact that it's negative for all of these three receptors. Um, it's a less common type of breast cancer. It typically affects about 10 to 15% of women with breast cancer. Um, but it's very important because it doesn't respond to the typical hormonal therapies or the targeted therapies towards her too. So triple negative breast cancer is more complex than other types of breast cancer because it doesn't, the cells, because they don't express the estrogen receptor and the progesterone receptor, and they don't overexpress this HER2 receptor, they don't respond to the typical hormonal therapies that are given to women with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. And they also don't respond to the HER2 targeted therapies because they just don't express that receptor. So that's one reason why it's more complex because it just doesn't respond to those usual um, therapies that are given to other women with breast cancer. Secondly, it does tend to be more aggressive. So it, the cells tend to divide um, more quickly and they tend to spread more. And so the prognosis for people with triple negative breast cancer is worse, both because of the characteristics of the tumor where it tends to be more aggressive and secondly, because it doesn't respond to those usual therapies. So there are specific groups of people who are more prone to getting triple negative breast cancer. Um, some people have inherited genes, um, and so it's in their family that they have these genes that sometimes predispose them to developing triple negative breast cancer. African American and Black women are also at a higher risk of breast cancer, of this specific type of uh, triple negative breast cancer compared to other groups. And then um, younger women sometimes develop more triple negative breast cancer, particularly young women who are overweight or obese seem to be at a particularly higher risk of developing triple negative breast cancer. So triglycerides are a type of fat or lipid um, that's found in the bloodstream. So if you were to get your lipid profile checked by your doctor, essentially you would get a, a result that comes with cholesterol levels, HDL cholesterol, which is the high density lipoprotein cholesterol, which we think of as the good cholesterol, and then LDL or the low density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides are the ones that we kind of consider the bad cholesterols. So your triglycerides in the blood come typically from um, diet. So if you have a diet that's high in fat or high in sugars, um, you can have high triglyceride levels. Similar to people who um, tend to drink alcohol and um, people who have uh, inactive lifestyles tend to have higher triglycerides than people um, who are more active um, and have healthier diets. So it's interesting. So the link between lipids and um, breast cancer is, is sort of an emerging area. So the thing about cholesterol is, and lipids are that they're not just in your, in your circulation. And while we typically think of them as increasing the risk for heart disease, um, they actually, there are lipids in all of our cells. So including our breast cancer cells um, and every other cell in your body, essentially they use lipids. Um, to form the structure of the cells, and they also use them to form hormones. So actually cholesterol can be converted into other hormones like estrogen and uh, progesterone. So when we think of the, the high lipid levels, what the cancer cells are doing is they seem to be taking up um, these lipids and they seem to be using them to divide more rapidly. Um, they also seem to use them for, for signaling within the cells. So um, the cells can use these lipids for various other functions. And then they seem to convert them to active hormones. So some things like estrogen and progesterone and other things like there are specific types of lipids that seem to be very active. And these can actually cause a, a change in the immune cells around the tumor cells, which can also cause the tumors to become more aggressive and spread. So being overweight or obese um, does increase the risk of certain cancers, um, or certain types of breast cancer, I should say. So if you are premenopausal, so younger women, 
um, who haven't gone through the menopause, who are overweight or obese, have a higher risk of developing triple negative breast cancer. Um, Postmenopausal women, interestingly, who are overweight or obese, actually have a higher risk of developing hormone receptor positive breast cancers. So there are another a number of other types of cancer that are um, that people who are overweight or obese are at an increased risk of. Um, I won't list them all off, but essentially there are 13 types of cancer that are um, commonly associated with being overweight or obese. Um, some of the ones we see here at Mount Sinai very commonly are multiple myeloma. Um, and also uh, liver cancer is another one in addition to breast cancer. So there are a number of things that people can do to reduce their triglyceride levels. So um, as I mentioned, so commonly people who have high triglycerides have like an inactive lifestyle. So the first thing to do if you have high triglycerides is essentially lifestyle modification. So um, choosing healthier foods, so less lower fat foods, um, lower sugar foods, limiting alcohol intake, increasing physical activity will all improve um, triglyceride levels in addition to losing weight. There are newer medications that are also um, coming out now. So people, who, some people who have very high triglyceride levels um, can have their triglycerides lowered with some of these newer medications that are coming on the market. So interestingly, yeah, so it seems like if people are overweight or obese, they actually can reduce their risk of uh, cancer by losing weight. And so there is a very recent study that came out um, looking at patients who had bariatric surgery for obesity. And they found that the people who had bariatric surgery um, and lost weight with the bariatric surgery actually reduced their risk of subsequently developing cancer compared to people who didn't uh, have bariatric surgery and didn't lose weight. So it does seem that um, losing weight will, can actually contribute to a decreased risk of cancer in people who are overweight or obese. So there are a number of things that we're doing here at Mount Sinai. So we have a very multidisciplinary team. So on the research side, um, as well as on the clinical side. So from the research perspective, um, we tend to have these institutes that all come together um, in order to share ideas and to share research plans. So within my own research, I work uh, with an oncologist, um, Dr. Erie, who uh, treats women with breast cancer and also does research. So we, we form a collaborative team in order to do this research. From the clinical perspective, we also have um, multiple people in different specialties who treat patients who have cancer, but for their complications, either of their cancer treatment or um, of or to reduce the side effects. Um, and so we have uh, cardiology and nephrology and endocrinology all working together along with internal medicine to treat kind of holistically all of the medical issues that come up in patients who have uh, cancers. <laughs> 